Cool. Well, before we move over to to trying it out, I do want to, um, you know, give you another chance to talk about the character that you that that we made uh, for you using the Path of the Gridiron uh, class because I don't want to take credit um, for yeah. this character. I don't so know you... if we made it. It was it was D and D backstory on YouTube. Yeah. So we're gonna make sure to put a link to D and D backstory below. Um, but yeah, tell me a little bit about that, Johnny. How you how you guys maybe together came up with this like this idea of um, and, and, and introduce us to the, the character that you'll be playing. Yeah, Halwyn Holthrop is the name of this half-elf, half the gridiron barbarian. Um, this is completely from the minds of D&D backstory. I had honestly had no input into the creation of that video. It was honestly my, um, I guess, in premier, like debut as with any kind of voice acting. It was very interesting. I don't, like, it, it was crazy. Hearing my voice up against actual experienced voice actors was humbling to say the least, but I, it was very exciting for me and something that I definitely want to ex experiment more with. Um, they did such a great job of writing the script. They had me go into um, their buddy's place in LA where he had this whole home like recording studio and I got to record in. Yeah, so it was, it was very fun. The script was great. The story was super fun. Halwyn is this disgraced, um, basically, football player within fantasy um, that now is going around as an adventurer um, and gets introduced to the idea of adventuring by this one, this great dwarf family that runs an inn um, by protecting them from, a, from an attack. So this, I think, is Halwyn either later on. Um, mm -hmm. He definitely wasn't 14th level when yeah, we were yeah. playing him. Um, D and D backstory actually came out with their own creation of Halwyn and his character sheet, but it's a little bit different. They made they multi classed him with mm -hmm. fighter, which I think was great, super thematic with the character. But we're trying to uh, show off Halwyn as a full, fully grown um, gridiron barbarian. So we wanted to get him all the way up to the capstone at 14th level. Yeah, yeah. So don't, if if the folks at D and D backstory are watching, I. I apologize. I didn't do a, a class for class level for level um, recreation, um, but you know he's a he's a half elf. I went with a folk hero background, um, mm -hmm. and uh, just because it felt like that's maybe maybe he started off as an athlete, which I think was the mm -hmm. background on uh, D and D backstory. But I'd like to imagine that since then he's become this folk hero, um, totally. and you know he's picked up a few magic items along the way. He's got a plus one halberd, some bracers of defense. Um, but you know, he's a barbarian, right? And he, I think he still has a sword and shield on his back when he needs it. Um, but for, for, for the, the little encounter where we, we want to show off, um, I think, you know, the, the idea here is that Halwyn and, and his group of, uh, of, of berserkers, um, have, uh, arrived at a, an ancient coliseum. Um, yeah. where there's this magical ritual going on that they have to stop. And, and Halwyn has this, uh, of course, because why wouldn't you, uh, this orb that, that must be returned to this altar in order to stop the ritual. So um, with that sort of setting the scene, um, we're going to switch over to, um, to, to seeing what, what things look like on Shard. Um, and so let me go ahead and move us over. Um, and now that we're here, just so folks know what's going on here, this is the view of the Game Master. So I'm seeing some things here that Johnny can't see, specifically yep. the, the combat tracker um, with things like armor class and health, etc. Um, on Johnny's screen, Johnny's just seeing the uh, character sheet and the map. Um, and so uh, uh, cue, cue the battle music, Nick, note to myself um, in the future. Uh, yeah, like, let's just jump right in and say, uh, I think I just already went ahead and rolled and pre-rolled initiative for everyone. Halwyn, of course, okay. and his group of berserkers are up first. Uh, but I think so Halwin, I, I rolled initiative with, uh, with a bandage, I assume. Like yes, barbarian. exactly. Which is why you got a yeah. 17. Uh, your fellow berserkers so got 14. And then the next highest after that, uh, you have a, a line of as ferocious. That works, that works great for the gridiron barbarian. Exactly. Being it's so perfect. In uh, and and so uh, you're you're staring down this as terrifying as they 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 can be this group of slavering kobold cultists who have dedicated their lives to ensuring uh, the ritual goes off um, without uh, without a problem. Behind them uh, we have the larger and fiercer uh, swolbolds uh, who I'll bring up a little bit. I had to put some swolbolds on here. Shout out to our friends at Cobalt Press because. Uh, these guys, I mean, look at them. Look, oh, at, yeah. look at those big boys. We had to throw a couple of them on. Don't call them a dragonborn. 
Yeah. Don't call him a dragonborn. But I think the real trouble uh, for you, Johnny, is the massive ogre that is in front of the altar uh, that is standing next to a pile of large boulders, which he looks to be getting ready to start hurling across the field. So, Like that. We with, got a gunslinger on the other side there. Yeah, with the scene set uh, and initiative rolled, uh, what would Halwyn like to do for uh, for his first turn? Um, he's going to take the orb out in front of him as if he's taking a snap from the center yep. and drop back into a three-step uh, into a three-step drop and and start to rage. He's going to use his playmaker ability, um, which allow which happens upon a rage. To it says uh, yeah. move yeah. Um, up to a number of enemies or a number of allies up to your Constitution modifier, which is plus three. Yep. Um, allows within thirty feet of you to use their uh, is it use their reaction. Yep. to move up to their speed. Yeah. So we're going to um, have numbers one, number three, four, and five yep. run forward. All right. Because uh, we got jerseys on us, obviously. All right. So we're going to go ahead and move. They're just going to charge straight forward. All right. So those three uh, here you. They get to make attacks. And they get to make attacks. Uh, incredible. Uh, so these guys are... Oh, if we did have a rogue on as one of them, it would have been awesome because, it, especially if it's like an assassin rogue or something yep. like that, they'd be able to come in, go first, they would have an advantage, they would have the opportunity yep. to be able to get a sneak attack. Unfortunately, we're working with a whole band of barbarians yeah. here, so yeah, yeah, not, yeah. No, no advantage being given, no, yep. uh, no sneak attack, but they're still going to hit hard. So they're going to swing with their great axe, and of course they're doing it recklessly. Mm. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just roll all the attacks first, and then we will... Uh, and then, and then we'll roll the damage. Now these are kobolds, folks, so they don't have very high hit points. So it looks like we're gonna do eight damage. Are they gonna survive the first hit? I don't think so. That one goes down, <laughs> cut down by Ooh. a great axe. Let's see this next one. Fourteen damage. This one gets just cut right in half. And oh, number no. fours, we're gonna see how this goes. Ten damage. Now these not looking good. Not looking great for these kobolds. Now what you just did with this playmaker. You opened up almost a clear shot for you to get mm -hmm. straight to the the next line of defense. Um, so that's that not was what a... I'm going to do yet, though. Okay. It's not what. Well, actually, you know what? I probably can. Um, so with that, with the fact that using my three uh, with my three constitution, I was able to get three of my team members out into the battle immediately before their turns to make an attack. Uh, but because they all hit, because I had three of them hit, I get yep. a bonus to my attack. I think you yes. got the one, you got the the sub the the mechanics in front of me, in front of you, right? Yep. So uh, that's one neat thing about shard. You can do if you can't find something, you can use a little search bar at the top right. Type oh, it man. in. So I just typed in playmaker, and here it is. Starting at 14th level, when you enter your rage, choose a number of willing creatures equal to your Constitution modifier within 30 feet. The user reaction. All right, now I I screwed that up. I said they moved up to their full speed. It's half their movement speed, but we're playing with the rule of cool tonight, folks. So um, if they end this movement within melee distance of an enemy, they may make a melee attack against that target. For the remainder of your rage, this is the best part. Gain a plus mm -hmm. one bonus to damage rolls for each ally that hits using this attack. When your rage ends. And I've already got a plus three for rage damage. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna get a plus six to every damage roll. Yeah. Was, I'm gonna use. 30 feet, 30, 30 feet of my movement to run up right there. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to use my ability called, um, where is it? Rushing Cleave. This is what you get at third level when you That's... get your first, uh, your, the first thing you yep, can get is. when you are a Gridiron Barbarian starting at third level, when you move at least 10 feet, I move 30, on your turn, you can decide to use a single attack against two enemies within melee range of you on the same roll. Who doesn't love a cleave? Like, I feel yeah. like people use cleave in their game so often, but it's not an official yep. rule. I want to make it an official rule. Yeah. If you beat both of their AC, you deal weapon damage to both targets. The number of enemies you can hit using this ability increases to three, four, and five at uh, sixth, tenth, and fourteenth levels, respectively. Uh, and you can use this once per short rest. So. Um, I would love to be able to just jump into a pile of five enemies, oh, yeah. but we have spread out offense or spread out defense right now. Uh, we're going to try to use my halberd uh, yes. because I do have a 10 foot reach. That's the only thing that's really? allowing me to hit number nine, uh, number nine over here. So I'm going to use one damage, one roll. Uh, I'm going to yeah. obviously go reckless. Oh yeah. And Absolutely. let's see here. Uh, I'm going to use my halberd. And that'll just be the plus 10 roll. Uh 
number there next to your halberd. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. I'm going to roll. Should I roll twice? That's a uh, So then there's a little green advantage button next to it in the chat box you should see. Yeah. You click that. Oh, that was a natural 20. That's a natural 20, folks. You can't script this. Uh, but Cannot. Thank, thank you to our developers for making sure. Um, that's, a, right. that's a dirty 30 right there. That's just um, incredible. So the damage is actually right next to it. You can see the little roll 1d10 plus 8 in the chat log. Uh, yeah. Dice roller, if you click on that. But it's brutal critical. So I'm going to be able to. I mean, how many? Hold on, hold on, I have this. I have the character sheet right here. At 13th level, you can roll two additional weapon dice. Yeah. Because you already get a brutal critical at ninth level. Yeah. So this isn't 1d10. This is 3d10. Yep. Or this is 1d10 doubled, and then add another two. Okay. So. Yep. All right. So go ahead and click the roll 1d10, the first one, because what, yep. what we'll do is we'll do we'll, do, we'll take care of the traditional critical. So if you click on that, roll 1d10 plus eight. And then you Seven's click. Then you click roll critical, roll right critical. above that in orange. Ooh, All right, so that's twenty damage that's before cool. you've added your additional criticals. Uh, now Love you that. said that's going to be two more. Um, what do I roll now? Uh, so now, do you see the little dice icon down in the chat log? It's like a little. Oh yeah. So click on that. You should then click the two d10 that you want to roll, and then you click the roll button next to it on the bottom right. Totally got it. Roll on 2d10. That's an eight. That's great damage right there. Okay. Super overkill. So you just did 34 damage to these poor Obvious. kobolds with their five hit points. <laughs> so describe for me what it looks like when Halwyn charges in with a uh, oh, massive man. whole arm uh, and I mean, just takes these. Feel very, like, this doesn't feel very um, thematic with character, but I feel like if you're going to do a... a, a, a natural 20 with the halberd you got to rock out a little bit like an air guitar with your halberd, uh, and then bring it around one hand and just like twirling like you said whirling dervish yep. earlier just twirling his halberd uh yeah. just gigantic 10 foot long axe yeah. uh cleaving these two kobolds into yeah and i forgot to mention there's of course hundreds of people here in the stands oh, that are here to see the the ritual but they they don't want to interfere but they see this swing, and I think there's a moment of pause as you're standing there between the two kobolds, and everyone's looking at what happened. This is, and then they they start to slide this, apart. This is you're, it's an away game. Yep. You know you're going to another team, um, but you get the ball first. Opening kickoff goes. You got the you're you're the quarterback starting on your own 20 yard line after a kickback or after a touchback, and this is first play of the game. Bomb touchdown. Yeah. Silence the crowd. I, mean, I know just, you can just see they're just instantly yeah, I think killed. 34 and damage and, and I'll, I'll zoom in here just so you can see our really cute little skeletons when, when they die. Oh. Look, at, look at those guys. And there's Howlin. Oh, I don't think we had a chance to get a zoom in on Howlin yet, but um, that all right. Fella. Yeah, that handsome fellow. Um, okay. I mean, I have a second attack here. You do? Uh, yeah. I, have a, I have a simple hand axe. You do? You got, you've got throwable hand axes. Yeah, let me throw, throw let me throw a hand axe at this uh, this swivel right here. Yeah, go for it. I've got advantage. So roll the plus nine. That's a nineteen. If I roll yeah. advantage, that's an eighteen. Ooh. Twenty-seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna roll damage. One d six plus seven is a whoo. six. Oh, you know what? We forgot to add the six for the rage damage. Oh. So that was an even forty on the first one, and this is now nineteen damage. So, not, so the good thing is, when, when you're raging, uh, it, I don't know if you can see it on your character sheet, oh, rage will automatically add. add that, but it's not oh, adding man. the plus three from your playmaker. I which can I then, can. when you use playmaker, it brings up in chat a condition, gridiron cool. rush. I apply gridiron rush to you, and I put That's it up to right. level three. And anyone who just watched, your, your damage just mm, went up. Yeah. Um, so we will go ahead and add that extra three. So on top of that, that's going to be 16 damage. Uh, to this soul bold. Uh, I think that hand, hand axe just thuds into his chest. Uh, an impressive turn uh, for Howlin. Um, yeah, no, the, the mods, the, the, the uh, engineers on this thing did a great job preparing this little encounter. It would have been yeah. horrible if I rolled an natural one. Yes, honestly, that yeah. brings us to uh, the Berserkers, your, your allies who are up next. And you just tell me where you want them to go and I'll move them around for you. Oh, they're they're going downfield. They, um, I know number two is kind of back here is yep. like a tailback or something but they're gonna use a dash action to get up to 13 here um four five seven they're all gonna run up to 14 three's gonna run up to 13. okay leave the oak all right so we got they're just gonna dash right up here 
Uh, oh, seven's a cobalt. He's like, hey, wait, what about me? Oh, Honestly, yeah. you know what, Johnny? This guy is looking for the exit. He just saw all of his buddies cut down in one fell swoop, literally. Uh, this one's going to charge in. They're just going to make some attacks. So uh, we'll just say, uh, in the interest of speeding things up, um, I'm going to say, for the folks at home, these two are able to take this guy. Uh, this this Berserker, he's going to swing recklessly with his axe, which is great, because he got a five and another five. So he's actually... No. He goes to he goes to slam his axe into the kobold, the swobold, mm -hmm. and he does that classic big bad guy. He catches the haft yeah. and just pushes it back. Uh, so that'll end the Berserker's charge, which brings us back to the kobolds. This guy... Is definitely running straight for the exit. Straight for the exit. He's gone. Uh, and it is. I went a little too far. The Ogre Hurler's turn. He sees you coming. He sees who's calling the shots here. He's ignoring your, your fellow barbarians. He's going to pick up one of these. I was going to say, could I have him run over to three here? Uh, which one? This guy? Bottom here. Yeah, you want him to try and take out three? Yeah. So here's what or at he's going to run towards me over three. Yeah, here's what he's going to do. He's going to pick up one of these boulders, shot put style, spin and move towards you. And he is going to make a uh, an attack with his boulder. Uh, so it's a 14. I don't think hits Holwyn's AC, does it? Not. No. This rock slams down. Him. So as he throws and chucks this boulder, he then continues the momentum before he even looks to see if the shot lands and is going to try and slam his shoulder into three. Right, so right when he gets there, yes. I'm going to be able to use my ability called Instinctive Block. Now you get Instinctive Block at sixth level. Uh, you, when at starting sixth level, when a hostile creature moves within five feet of an ally, you can use your reaction and move up to half of your movement and make a shove attack against this creature. If the shove attack is successful, the creature six, uh, calls prone. Excuse me, falls prone. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and then you regain them at a long rest. So he just got within five feet of number three. He sure did. And but for me, uh, he's only ten feet away from me with yep. my forty feet movement, which is well within my half. Oh yeah. So I'm going to use a shove attack using my reaction against this big ogre. All so right. um, I'm raging, so I get advantage on this. Yes, so go ahead and try to click the use button next to instinctive block. I'm trying to remember if we put a mechanic. Uh, it's right above playmaker. Okay, mm -hmm. you did. All right, so um, it is a... You're, you're, athletic. Yeah, so make an athletics check. Advantage. Ooh, it's a natural oh. I don't need it. God. Uh, I mean... Thank you, mod. Come Thank on, you. come Cheers. on. Uh, really yeah, I don't think I even have to roll a saving throw. I mean, I think this just happens. Um, you completely just spear this guy, and he goes down to the ground prone. It's awesome because it happens before his attack. It, it's, it, it, it's triggered by it coming within five feet as opposed to it coming with having an attack. So you uh, you get to knock him prone. How much movement did he make? Because I feel like it's probably over it's, half of his movement, It is. Right? Yeah, he moved from here to here. He moved 30 feet to get here. So he doesn't so have enough. He's not going to be able to get up. No, so he has he's... to make his attack at yeah. disadvantage now that he's prone. Yep, absolutely. See, this is the, the smart barbarian uh, attack that we're talking about. So he's going to try oh, and idea. slam with disadvantage. So he got a 16, but with disadvantage it's a three for a total of ten which is not enough to hit his friend look at this it just everything's working um okay all right well uh this swobold is going to try and uh, uh pick up uh, your buddy here this berserker he's going to try to uh use his slam attack um which is, is a 14 which is enough to hit your berserker who only have uh, 13 in their armor class uh, and the cool thing about Swobolds, uh, when they attack someone, they are grappled. Um, so he deals 11 damage, uh, and he is grappled. Um, and on his next turn, he's going to try to crush him. So you see him, he's got like okay. a your friend. Yeah. Uh, and that will bring us back to the top for you. So back to my turn. This is a free action, but it has it triggers on a dash action. Okay. Um, I am increasing my... Uh, movement from 40 feet, I'm dashing, make it 80 feet. I have 80 feet of movement to play with here. I don't need all of that. Yeah. But on, on full-blooded blitz, you get this at 10th level. When you use the dash action, you may move through the space of creatures no more than one size larger than you. Lucky for me, the ogre is only one size larger. 
Uh, when you do so, the creature must make a strength saving throw equal to eight plus your proficiency bonus plus strength modifier. Right now, that is a DC 17. Uh, on a failure, the creature takes 2d6 plus strength modifier bludgeoning damage and falls prone. On a success, the creature takes half damage and does not fall prone. You may reuse this feature once per short rest. So I'm really only going to take one, five, 10, 15, 20, 25 feet of movement here. Uh, using my dash action to use my full blooded blitz, I'm going to press use. Um, All right. I'm going to roll my 2d6 damage, which yep. is three and a five. Okay, so add plus your four, total of 12. So uh, so he did that, shows full-blooded blitz here in the chat, and you see the save strength 17. So if I click on the ogre and the soul bolt, and I click here, I can roll strength save, and it will deal uh, either full damage if they fail, or half damage if they, is it half damage if they succeed, right? Yep. And they both failed. Uh, nice. They both failed. Uh, and so one of them took eight and one of them took nine, and you'll see the swole bolt was yellow ringed and now he's red ringed. It does it for you automatically. But again, for the sake of the narrative, we want to wrap things up tonight, folks. Um, we're going to say that one is taken out, uh, leaving the uh, space between Halwyn and the altar wide open. Oh, he's going to finish his dash action. He's going to run straight to the altar and... We're mixing metaphors a little bit. We're mixing sports metaphors, but he's going to he's going to climb up that thing. Uh, he's an athlete. He's got the athlete feet, which I yep. appreciate. Um, giving myself a climb feet of 40, 40 feet. Yes. Uh, climb, climb speed of 40, 40 feet. I'm going to climb up this thing and dunk it straight into the top of this altar. Yes. I think the crowd, despite they were all evil cultists, but they couldn't help but get get swayed by, my by Halwyn's yeah. you know natural charisma. Notice this is a barbarian with a charisma of twelve. Okay, uh, the crowd roars. Uh, the the uh, ritual that had been beginning to grow power and, and take place below the stadium uh, is extinguished as the orb is retired, uh, and Halwyn and his uh, band of berserkers have once again saved it. So. Um, incredible. We did it while using every single uh, gridiron. Yeah. Um, mechanic. We used everyone, and you got two crits, which is crazy. For everyone <laughs> on our Discord server that comes on and complains about the numbers on Shard not being friendly to them, look, like, it can happen to you, okay? Um, yeah. So, or a right. poor carpenter blames their tools. Yeah. <laughs> um, incredible. Well, I'm going to bring us back, uh, back over to, to just us. Um, that was so much fun, Johnny. Uh, it was awesome to get to see uh, the, the Path of the Gridiron in action. I hope it was cool for you um, to get to Absolutely. see it like come to life like this in the VTT. Um, and I hope folks at home, you know, once now that you've seen it in action, you'll consider going to the Marketplace, which will be linked below, and picking up a copy for yourself. Um, if you're a GM and you purchase it uh, and you invite your friends to a campaign, any of them can use it to build that character within that class. Um, so definitely share the love. Um, what's super fun is that you, it doesn't have to be a, you know, one of, one of the things I wanted to say in designing subclasses is that you really want to make your subclasses not be a one trick pony in terms of building the character. Um, you don't want every, you know, beast master ranger to look like your favorite character. That That's not what ends up happening. You, it's such a wide um, there's there's room to breathe when you're designing a character. You don't have to make the Gridiron Barbarian a football player. They can be just a fast um, barbarian. It can just end up working out like that. So you don't you don't feel the need to be trapped into like, well, I don't want a football player in my campaign, or I don't want to play a football player. You can give your your players the opportunity of saying like, okay, well maybe they're just a uh, a, 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 a what's the word. Um, gladiator yeah uh that's a gladiator that works in a team uh yeah. and that's just kind of the theme that ends up playing so there's there's tons of ways to be able to play this this subclass uh you're not locked into having to be um a football fan or a football yeah. player because yeah. you know you don't have to be a football fan to play the subclass yeah and i thought that you know i i also shout out to two minute tabletop that's where i got this map from i thought it would be fun to lean into that football theme but i actually as someone who uh is you know anyone who knows me knows i'm not a a huge sports guy uh it's not something that i you know growing up really resonated with me but to be able to have a class like this like i'm like okay i could see myself like this class it's it's dynamic and fun and exciting and i don't think i would see it and go like ah 
I don't know, it sounds kind of sports themed, I'm not so sure about it. So that's why I wanted folks to see it here in action, um, to kind of see what it can do um, on screen. So that was great. Um, I just want to give you, you know, the last few minutes to talk about what's coming up for you. Yes, I know we'll be there. If you want any updates, um, join the sync RP, go to syncrpg.com, join the newsletter. Um, that's the best way to be able to keep up with us aside from our Instagram. Um, yeah. And the rest of the summer, we got events. We got a, uh, I think we're going to have a live play over at San Diego comic-con as well as possibly a panel. Uh, we are going to have a live play at Gen Con on Friday night at nine o'clock on the main stage um that is brand new information we're going to be on the main stage which is super super cool we've got some really really great players including jay foster jasmine bular and alicia marie um some really really cool names who are just even better people um and then in you know through august we're going to be really pumping up the book until the launch on september 3rd on kickstarter we will be launching sync and we're going to hope for a really really big day one um aside from that i've got the athletics check podcast because i don't have enough on my plate i've got the athletics check podcast that just launched um as of we're recording a week ago so um that's where i talk to athletes about their nerdy interests and uh, nerds about their relationship with sports so episode one was with Amy Vorpal. We talked about how she's super into Muay Thai and then went to the um, University of Oklahoma and is, is a Sooner. We built a Sooner in D&D. &D. Cool. And then we end it with a, a little mini D&D &D adventure where Amy gets to play herself, uh, a D&D &D version of herself, um, complete with multi-class and, yeah. and race and everything. We play a little adventure that is actually behind, um, that's in our Patreon. So if you are if you want to check out our Patreon, it's called Athletics Check Pod. Uh, you'll be able to find it there. Just find us on social media. I'm posting weekly videos from that. Um, yeah, you talked about my TED, my TED Talk experience. My, TED, uh, my TEDx talk is going to be on YouTube. It's probably at this point when it gets released, you can search my name, Jai San TEDx. Yeah. I feel like I've spoken enough. That's, it'll that's all, all I yeah, it'll all be linked below. You know, you forgot to mention you've also recently gone viral on TikTok. Um, which is yeah, sure completely exciting new experience. But I, I have to live in that higher <laughs> costume now. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you kind of doomed yourself. I expect some uh, sync uh, Johnny uh, crossplay uh, TikTok. Oh, if you think uh, that it wasn't um, at least a little bit uh, <laughs> <laughs> planned that uh, with me and yes, it's, it's that yeah. there's that barbarian brain again. So there you go. Um, well, fantastic. Thank you so much, Johnny. Um, for folks who who tuned in tonight, uh, you know, if if you're new to Shard, if this is your first experience, um, I do hope you'll check it out. We are a virtual tabletop for Fifth Edition D and D, and most recently uh, for the Black Flag role playing system uh, from. Mobile Press. We've got the Tales of the Valiant, um, Player's Guide, and Monster Vault and Adventures. Um, but uh, primarily, we're, we're out here um, supporting 5e and 5e adjacent systems, um, subclasses from uh, third party creators like Johnny and dozens of others in our marketplace. I, I do hope you'll consider checking it out. Um, and again, thanks for joining. And Johnny, this has been wonderful. Nick, you're always, the, you're always the best. You're always so much fun to talk to. So I really appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, folks. Take care.